The size of the cache is small compared to the main memory. Therefore, there should be some mechanism to fill the data in the cache. And here we will be using mapping techniques. There are three in that the first and the easy one is a direct mapping. In direct mapping, the logic is each memory block maps with exactly one cache line. Something like this. To have a better understanding, let me give you an example. Imagine our system has a main memory of size 128 bytes and cache size 32 bytes. And the size of the block in main memory as well as in the cache is same. And for convenience, let me draw it separately. And the block size is 8 bytes. Now from this data, we can calculate the number of blocks and the number of cache lines. So let's do it. Number of blocks is memory size by block size. So 128 by 8, it is 16 blocks. That can be written as 2 power 4 blocks. So we need 4 bits for block indexing. Block index is 4. And the block indices are 0000, 0000, 0001. So these are the block index. Similarly, I can find the number of lines. It is cache size by block size. So 32 by 8, that is 4 lines. Or we can write this as 2 power 2 lines. So we need 2 bits for cache index and the indices are 0, 0, 0, 0001011011. 1, 0, 1, 1. This is the cache index. In direct mapping, the logic is the block index least significant bits are matched with cache index. So here cache index we have 2 bits, so 0, 0. So in the block index, go to the least significant 2 bits. So wherever 0, 0 is there, just mark them. So it's here, here. There will be two more positions, that is, this is actually 0, this is 4, and this is 8, and this is 12. So these blocks, so these blocks having the least significant bits, same as the cache index, they can be placed in the line 0. So line 0 can hold 0, 4, 8 and 12. Let me redraw this. Okay, this looks better. So line 0 can hold 0, 4, 8 and 12. Now how about line 1? Let's think about it. Line 1 can hold 1, 5, 9 and 13. The reason is these blocks least significant bits match with the cache index. Does it mean that all the four blocks are placed into it? No. This line, the line 1, can hold any one of this. Now, which one it will hold? It really depends. Now, the CPU must have a mechanism to understand which out of these four blocks are residing in the line 1. Let me take the previous slide. So, line 0 can hold 0, 4, 8 and 12. For the CPU to understand which block is there in the cache, it maintains some extra information bits called as tag bits. So for each line, the CPU holds tag bits. The tag bit size is block index minus cache index. Here cache index we have 2 bits and for block index we have 4 bits. So tag size will be 4 minus 2, 2 bits. So we need 2, 2 bits for each line. And tags hold most significant bits of block index. What it means is, suppose block 0 is loaded into the line 0. Here the most significant bits are 0, 0. So tag will hold 0 and 0. And suppose block 4 is loaded onto line 0. Here the most significant 2 bits are 0, 1. So tag will be 0, 1. And if it's block 12 into line 0, most significant bits are 1, 1. So tag will be 1, 1. Here you can notice the most significant 2 bits are different for 4 of the blocks. So this distinction helps us to identify which among these blocks is actually placed in the 
cache. Now let's look from processor perspective to understand how it decodes an address. For this, let's assume cache is half filled with some data and the CPU is generating requests in a sequence. These are the requests. In the previous lecture, we have covered memory and cache basic formulae. Using that, I can write the following. Memory size is 128 bytes. That's 2 power 7. So 7 bits are needed for physical address. Cache size is 32 bytes. That's 2 power 5. So 5 bits are needed for cache address. And block size, here I forgot to mention. Block, let's take it as 8 bytes. So block size, 8 bytes. 8 is 2 power 3. So we need 3 bits for block offset. Now let's draw the diagram. Physical address is 7 bits. So in that block offset is 3. So first 3 bits will be the block offset. And rest of the bits are block index. Here in this case it will be 4. And we know that cache address we have 5 bits. So least significant 5 bits will be taken as cache address. So in that cache addressing, the first three bits will remain same, block offset or line offset, which is three. And the rest of the bits in the cache address is cache index. In this case, it is two. And the most significant two bits are the tag bits. Here, one thing to note, to find the tag bits, we can do it in two ways. Tag bits equals, look at this. Uh, this is the physical address. Tag bits can be thought as physical address bits minus cache address bits. So from this, if we remove this, the leftover is your tag bits. That is method one. Or from block index, I can remove the cache index. Still, I'll get the tag bits. Or the second formula is block index minus cache index. So whichever is convenient for you, you can follow that approach. All right, this is a complete categorization of physical address and direct mapping but this is very much messy so let me redraw it okay so in the physical address first few bits are block offset next is the cache indexing or the line number and the last is tag bits now let's take the first request it is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 if this is a request from the cpu the first three bits are block offset the next two is the cache index or the line number so the line number is 00. So this is the line. So CPU is able to identify which line. Then in the physical address, the tag bit says 00. And in the directory, the tag bits are 00. Using comparator, these two are compared. And here in this case, they match. That means that the block we are searching for is present in the cache. Now using the block offset, it will go inside the block and then it will identify the exact block position here whenever cpu finds the data inside the cache it is called as a cache hit if not it's a miss and for the first request it is a hit now look at the second one again the first three bits are block offset leave that the next two bits are cache index here cache index is 0 1 that means line 1 now for the line 1 it goes to the tag directory and it compares with the tags in the physical address again in this case these two match that means that data is available in the cache so using the block offset it goes inside the block it goes to exact position and it is the data again for the second request it is a hit because the data is available now here we have the third one again the first three bits of block offset we can leave them directly go to the cache index here it is zero zero so go to the line zero zero now compare the tag bits in the directory with the tag bits in the physical address we see that here it is 00 here it is 01 it means that the data which we are searching for is not available in the cache therefore this is a mess now what will happen now the cpu has to search in the main memory find out the block and then bring it to the cache now to identify the block in the main memory it again uses the physical address so 0100 011. So 
we already know in physical address first three bits in this case it is block offset the rest of the bits are your block index so go to this particular block 0 1 double 0 so where is 0 1 double 0 so this is the block so this particular block has to be transferred here now whenever this happens automatically the most significant bits will be changed so this will change it will become 0 1 and here we have b4 all right now let's go to the last request this is first three bits of block offset we leave them next two bits are cache index it is 0 1 so go to 0 1 then compare the tag directory bits with the physical address tag bits now here we see that they match therefore this is a head that's how the cpu will operate with the data so whenever data is not found in the cache it will go to the main memory then pulls the data into the cache if data is found it's a hit if data is not found it is a mess